The 80-20 rule is one of the most helpful of all concepts of time and life management. And this rule says that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. 20% of your customers will account for 80% of your sales. 20% of your products or services will account for 80% of your profits. 20% of your tasks will account for 80% of the value of what you do, and so on. Each of these tasks may take the same amount of time to accomplish, but one or two of these tasks will contribute five or 10 times the value of any of the others. Often, one item on a list of 10 tasks that you have to do can be worth more than all the other nine items put together. This task is invariably the frog that you should eat first. The sad fact is that most people procrastinate on the top 10 or 20% of items that are the most valuable and important, the vital few. They busy themselves instead with the least important 80%, the trivial many that contribute very little to results. You often see people who appear to be busy all day long, but seem to accomplish very little. This is almost always because they're working on tasks that are of low value, while they procrastinate on the one or two activities that could make a real difference to their companies and to their careers. The most valuable tasks you can do each day are often the hardest and most complex, but the payoff and rewards for completing these tasks efficiently can be tremendous. You must adamantly refuse to work on tasks in the bottom 80% while you still have tasks in the top 20% left to be done. Before you begin work, always ask yourself, is this task in the top 20% of my activities or in the bottom 80%? There's a rule for success. Resist the temptation to clear up small things first. Remember, whatever you choose to do over and over again eventually becomes a habit that's hard to break. The hardest part of any important task is getting started on it in the first place. Once you actually begin work on a valuable task, you seem to be naturally motivated to continue. The fact is that the, the amount of time required to complete an important job is often the same as the time required to do an unimportant job. The difference is that you get a tremendous feeling of pride and satisfaction from the completion of something of valuable and significant. Time management is really life management. Your ability to choose between the important and the unimportant is the key determinant of your success in life and work. Make a list of all the key goals, activities, projects, and responsibilities in your life today. Resolve today that you are gonna spend uh, more and more of your time working in those few areas that, that can really make a difference in your life and career and less and less time on lower value activities. But you, most people give up before they even make the first try. and. The reason they give up is because of all the obstacles, difficulties, problems, and roadblocks that immediately appear as soon as you decide to do something that you've never done before. The fact is that successful people fail far more often than unsuccessful people. Successful people try more things, fall down, pick themselves up, and try again over and over again before they win through. You should expect to fail and fall short many times before you achieve your goals. You should look upon failure and temporary defeat as a part of the price that you pay on your road to the success that you will inevitably achieve. Identify all the obstacles that stand between you and your goal. Write down every single thing that you can think of that might be blocking you or slowing you down from moving ahead in the area of problems and difficulties. Successful people think about solutions most of the time. Unsuccessful people think about problems and difficulties most of the time. Problem-oriented people talk continuously about their problems, about who or what caused them, how unhappy or angry they are, and how unfortunate it is that they have occurred. Solution-oriented people, on the other hand, simply ask the question, how, and then get to work to remove the problems. Personal leadership is the ability to solve problems. Effectiveness is the ability to solve problems. All men and women who accomplish anything of importance are people who have developed the ability to solve the problems that stand between them and their goals. The more you focus on solutions, the more and better solutions will come to you. The better you get at solving problems, the faster you will be at solving each subsequent problem. Eventually, you will be solving problems that, that can have significant financial consequences for you and others. This is the way the world works. The fact is, 
that you have the ability to solve any problem or overcome any obstacle on the path to your goal if you desire the goal intensely in accomplishing any major goal there's always a constraint or bottleneck that you must get through. Your job is to identify it accurately and then to focus all of your energies on alleviating that key constraint. Your ability to remove this bottleneck or deal with this limiting factor can help you move ahead faster than perhaps any other step you can take. The 80-20 rule applies to the constraints between you and your goals. In this case, this rule says that 80% of your constraints will be within yourself. Only 20% of your constraints will be outside of yourself, contained in other people and situations. The primary obstacles between you and your goals are usually mental. They are psychological and emotional in character. They are within yourself rather than within the situation around you. And it is with these mental obstacles that you must begin if you want to achieve everything that is possible for you. The two major obstacles to success and achievement are fear and doubt. It is, first of all, the fears of failure, poverty, loss, embarrassment, or rejection that hold the average person back from trying in the first place. The second mental obstacle closely aligned to fear is that of self-doubt. We doubt our own abilities. We compare ourselves unfavorably to others and think that uh, others are somehow better, smarter, and more confident than we are. We think, I'm not good enough and we feel inadequate and inferior to the challenges of achieving the great goals that we so much want to accomplish. The primary antidotes to doubt and fear are courage and confidence. The higher your level of courage and confidence, the lower will be your levels of fear and doubt, and the less effect these negative emotions will have on your performance and behavior. The way that, that you develop courage and confidence is with knowledge and skill. The more you learn the things you need to know to achieve your goals, the less fear you will feel on the one hand, and the more courage and confidence you will feel on the other. Think about learning to drive for the first time. You are probably extremely tense and nervous and made a lot of mistakes. You may have driven erratically and been a danger to yourself and others, but over time, as you mastered the knowledge and skills of driving, you became better and better and your confidence increased. Today you can quite comfortably get into your car and drive across the country with no fear or worry at all. You are so confident in driving that you can do it well without even thinking about it. Dr. Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania spent more than 25 years studying the phenomenon of what he called learned helplessness. The most common manifestation of learned helplessness is contained in the words, I can't. Whenever the victim of learned helplessness is offered an opportunity, possibility, or new goal, he immediately responds by saying, I can't. Whatever it is, he always has a self-limiting reason that immediately slams on the brakes of his potential. It short circuits any attempt or desire to set a new goal or to change things in any way. Learned helplessness is usually caused by destructive criticism in childhood, negative experiences growing up, and failure experiences as an adult. The way you get over this natural tendency to sell yourself short is by setting small goals, making plans, and working on them each day. As you become more confident in yourself and your abilities, you can set even larger goals. Eventually, with a record of successes behind you, it won't be long before you become unstoppable. The second mental obstacle that you need to overcome is the comfort zone. Many people become complacent with their current situations. They become so comfortable at a particular job or relationship or at a particular salary or level of responsibility that they become reluctant to make any changes at all, even for the better. Don't let this happen to you. The way that you get out of your comfort zone and break loose from learned helplessness is by setting big, challenging goals. You then break these goals down into specific tasks, set deadlines, and work on them every day. Once you've made a list of all the obstacles that are standing in the way of achieving your major goals, organize the obstacles by priority. What is the largest single obstacle? If you could wave a magic wand and remove one major obstacle from your path, which one obstacle, if removed, would help you the most in moving ahead more rapidly? When you ask the question with regard to your goal, why am I not there already? What answer comes to mind? What is holding you back? What is standing in? It is at this point that you have to drill down to determine the correct obstacle 
Before you begin taking steps to remove it, you do this by asking the question, what else could be the problem? After each definition of the problem, by identifying the constraints or reasons that you are not achieving your personal income goals. Each definition leads to a different set of solutions. They require that you think in different ways. In your personal life, it's the same. The accuracy with which you identify the obstacles or bottlenecks that are holding you back will determine the appropriateness of the various steps that you can take to remove or alleviate those obstacles. You could start off by stating the problem in this way, I am not earning enough money. So what else is the problem? Maybe the answer is I'm not contributing enough value to be worth more money. What else could be the problem? Maybe it's I'm not uh, good enough at what I do to be capable of getting results that are worth more than I'm earning today. What else could be the problem? Well, you could say, I don't use my time efficiently enough during the workday. What else could be the problem? You could say, I spend my evenings watching television, my weekend socializing, and I seldom read or learn anything that would help me to be better at my job. Aha, now you have found the real problem. Now you have a clear idea of what you have to do differently if you're going to solve your original problem, which was to earn more money, once you've determined the major obstacle that is holding you back, rewrite that obstacle as a positive goal. You then make a list of all the things that you could do to upgrade your knowledge and skills, improve your time management, increase your efficiency and effectiveness, and make more sales for your company. You set deadlines and measures next to each step in your strategy to achieve excellence in your field. You then select one key task and take action on it immediately. From then on, you hold your own feet to the fire. You discipline and drive yourself to do the things that you need to do to become the kind of person you need to become in order to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself. By following through on your resolution, you virtually guarantee your ultimate success and the achievement of almost any goal you can set for yourself. If you have any questions or concerns about the accuracy of your problem definition, discuss it with someone you know and trust. Put your ego aside, invite honest feedback and criticism. Be open to the possibility that you have fundamental flaws and weaknesses that are standing in the way of your realizing your full potential. Be brutally honest with yourself. Once your problem or obstacle is clear to you, ideas, opportunities, and answers will come to you from various sources. You will begin to attract into your life all kinds of resources that will help you to overcome the obstacle or difficulty, either within yourself or, or within the situation around you, and move you more rapidly toward your goal. For every problem or obstacle that is standing between you and what you want to accomplish, there is a solution of some kind somewhere. Your job is to be absolutely clear about what sets the speed at which you achieve your goal, and then to focus your time and attention on alleviating that constraint by removing your major obstacle. You will often make more progress in a few months than the average person might make in several years. Now here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, identify a major goal of yours and then ask, why aren't I there already? What is holding me back? List everything you can think of. Second, identify the constraint or limiting factor in yourself or the situation that sets the speed at which you achieve your goal. And third, develop several definitions of your major problem or obstacle. Keep asking, what else is the problem? And be prepared to follow where the answer leads.